subscribe. You want to know the number one way that a narcissist escapes accountability? It's actually something called DARVO. And I'm going to explain it in this video. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am a globally recognized narcissist negotiation expert. I'm also an attorney, and I've written a few best-selling books, including Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with a Narcissist and Win. And if you are new here to this channel, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell? It'll help you out because... I upload brand new videos every single day, and it also helps us grow and the community grow because we want you to be empowered and inspired and help you shift that dynamic of power and become the best version of yourself. That's what we're all about here. Our mission is to help you have that authentic power that you definitely should have. All right. So let's talk about what it, the, the number one way that a narcissist escapes accountability. You know, obviously they do this whole thing, projection and deflection, lying and deny. And I talk about that all the time, but you know, it, what's going on with the narcissist is they feel this emptiness, this shame inside of them. They have this shame wound. And so it's this fragile ego is, is so, um, it's almost like glass, you know? And so this survival is happening. And so you almost, it, it's like this nerve. And if you touch it, 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 it just sets them off. And, and so they're just going to go nuts on whatever or whoever. And so you you have to understand that that's what's really going on. If you understand that and you know that that's what's happening, I think it makes it a little bit easier for you to not take it as personally because what is really going on is has nothing to do with you, right? It has all to do with them. So, you know, and they, you know, they say it's up to 7% of the population has narcissistic personality disorder. But if you lump in other personality disorders that have no empathy, you know, antisocial personality disorders or personality disorders that have, you know, bipolar or something like that, it could be up to 15% of the population. And so, I mean, you know, I think it's even probably higher than that. So, I mean, you know, you're talking about a big chunk of the population, right? So how do narcissists use DARVO to avoid accountability? Well, what they do is they deny. So DARVO, the D stands for deny. So the first thing that happens is you say to them, for example, hey, you know, you did this bad thing, whatever it is, you know, you were, let's say, you know, texting with this woman and you shouldn't have been, okay? Well, then they will deny that they were doing that. So that's the first thing that they will do. So the next thing that they will do is they will then go on the attack against you and they will adamantly go on the attack or they'll say it, it wasn't, you know, the first thing they'll do is, no, I, I didn't do that. Or you're making too much of a big deal about it, or you're crazy, or you're seeing things wrong or, you know, you're too sensitive, you know, all of those things. So the first thing they do is they deny it. Second thing they will do is they will attack you. Sometimes they can become pretty aggressive about it. You're the crazy one. You're the one who is the liar. 
you're the one who usually is the cheater. You're the one who is the is the is the one who stays out late at night. You're the one who is texting with all of your coworkers. You're the one who wears the short, short skirts. You're the one who is flirting all the time with everybody. You're the one who is, uh, you know, was talking to your high school boyfriend on Facebook, uh, you know, 15 years ago and had the emotional affair. You know, you're the one who uh, is, has all these problems and they'll start bringing up things from whenever and, and making a big, all kinds of noise around that. And and they will make so much noise around it. And especially, you know, let's say you're maybe you're marriage counseling or something like that. So they make so much noise around that, that let's say you're talking to a marriage counselor that the marriage counselor now thinks, wait a minute, maybe you are just as bad or maybe you are worse than the other person. And, you know, you're left thinking, no, I didn't do any of those things. That that has nothing to do with it. Or don't you see that this person is actually abusing me? I, I didn't talk to the high school boyfriend. I didn't do any of those things. I, I, I wasn't uh, you know, a liar. I didn't wear short skirts. I didn't have lunch with this person. N- none of those things took place. But the way they go after you in such a way, then it makes the marriage counselor think, mm, I don't know. I think that, you know, maybe there's something to this. And so the, the abuser then switches roles. So so it's deny, attack, so reverse reverse victim so the, the the abuser then switches roles arguing basically that they are the real victim here they are the real victim and that the other person is actually the offender the other person is actually the offender the abuser actually then tries to claim that they are unfairly accused that that, that the other person's actually making these accusations to cover up their own behavior because the other person is actually the cheater that um, that they're trying to blame shift. And, and then, you know, they try to paint themselves in a good light and, and, tr- and then they push blame over onto the accuser and and it make the accuser seem like they're the ones who are obviously far worse and here they are being wrongfully accused and and wrongfully victimized and and blame shift onto the accuser and 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 you know, here they are, the innocent one. And they make all this noise about it. And they may, they might do this outside of counseling. They do this to everybody in the world. And of course, this just inflicts more emotional pain, more mental abuse onto the person who's actually the person experiencing the abuse. Right. So if you guys have seen this, give me a totally in the comments below, because this is the number one way that a narcissist escapes accountability, escapes accountability. And it's awful. It's absolutely awful the way they do this. If you are dealing with this, you're you're going to need support. You're going to need help. And you know, so join my free private Facebook group. It's uh, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. It's a Facebook group that you can join. I also have phrases for disarming narcissists 
which will help you get started. You can get those at disarmthenarc.com. They're free phrases for disarming narcissists. Disarmthenarc.com. Just some phrases to get you started. You can use those in texts, emails, when you're communicating with them. So use those to get you, yourself started for sure. We have a, a sponsor here on this channel, which is BetterHelp. And you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung to get started with that. It is a sponsor for us on this channel, which means we receive commissions there, but you do not pay any extra if you, if you use them. So but by denying their actions, the attacking person confronting them ends up flipping the role of, of becoming the victim and the offender. And then the narcissist eff effectively then redirects attention away from their own actions, right? It, it cast out on the victim's claims to the world. So the rest of the world thinks that, oh, poor, poor little narcissist, poor little narcissist. So then basically what's happening is that the victim is being re-victimized again. Everybody else then becomes unknowing flying monkeys in the scheme, whether they know it or not. You know, they're, they're part of the whole act of it all. The problem that they have, which is this, this desperate need for self-preservation, this desperate need to survive. And so they grasp onto whatever they need to do to survive at, because they're being attacked, because they've been caught. And so they'll just do whatever they need to, to maintain the self-image. So, you know, you have to kind of put this boundary down around you. That's why I say step one, don't run. Step two, make a U-turn. Step three, break free. These three steps, baby steps, but that step one is putting that shield down around you, that invisible shield, and just start to look at them as if they're a third party and just say, you know, I am not going to allow this person to penetrate me. And I'm just going to, turn this around and just say, you know, I can see that this person is upset, but this is not going to affect me anymore because this is, you know, not my issue because I no longer, you need to no longer see them as a person who is impacting you. You need to start seeing them as a, almost like a third party where you are reporting the news, where you're just observing them. Because you, you need to understand that you're not dealing with rational, you're not dealing with reasonable. And by you know educating yourself and watching videos like this or reading books or understanding what's happening, that will help you tremendously. You know, getting self-care, understanding what real boundaries look like, understanding what healthy communication really looks like, getting support groups, definitely documenting what's happening, starting the process of documentation, very, very, very important. That is something you, you know, you're going to start to need to do because you, you might need that down the road. That's going to be very, very important for you to do as well. You know, making sure that you are doing what you need to do for self-care. So those are some things that you can do to start to step one, don't run and start to make that shift, right? So anyway, that's the number one way that a narcissist escapes accountability. I know that you guys have seen it. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, because I'm sure that other people could use this information who are dealing with this for sure. 
And the next video that I want you to watch is the five ways that narcissists make you feel bad about yourself. And there's so many different ways, but these are the top five ways that a narcissist makes you feel bad about yourself. The next thing that I want you to do is make sure that you have subscribed here. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'm Rebecca Zung. And if you haven't gotten those phrases for disarming narcissists, make sure you do that now, disarmthenarc.com. And we're going to continue this journey together and make sure you know that you're not alone in this. You have this beautiful light inside of you. And you're just now rediscovering that probably because somebody told you that you, you may not have power anymore. And we're shifting that power and, and we are finding that light deep inside of you right now, All right? So I will see you in that next video. I'm Rebecca Zong. I'm so glad you're here. Remember, today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. And remember, they only win if you give in. I'll see you soon.